Hey, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the basics of using SketchUp. Today, we're going to take a look at importing files into SketchUp. So one of the cool things about SketchUp is it can work with a lot of different file types. Um, I would imagine we'll probably make a series of videos just on the different files that we can import and how to use each one. Today, we want to do a super high level importing files into SketchUp. We're going to look at pulling in 2D and 3D files right now. Okay, so here I'm in SketchUp. A uh, brand new model, nothing going on here, so we're just going to pull some files right in here. I'm going to go up to File, and everything we're looking at is right here in Import. So I'm going to click on Import. All right, so it's going to drop a list down here, and it's going to, you know, this is all standard fare, navigating to where your files are saved. What we want to look at is this format down at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this. So there's two different types of files, or, or two different uh, families of files you can import in SketchUp. 3D files and 2D files. Image files would be 2D. So up here at the top, we have a all the 3D files. So here from SKP down to STL, we have SKP files, DEM, IFC, DWG, DXF, STL, DAE, DMZ, 3DS, OBJ, and STL files. I know I went through that super fast, but when you open up SketchUp, you'll see the exact same list. So you don't have to take notes or writing that down. These are 3D files. These will pull in three-dimensional geometry. Uh, how it pulls in or what it pulls in will be different based on the file type. Below that, we have our image files, BMP, JPEG, PNG, PSD, TIFF, TGA, and PDF files. Most of these are uh, bitmap type images. So most of these are going to pull in raster images, which are just going to show up as, you know, just images on, on there. Uh, it is possible to pull in a PDF with vector imagery, but for this, we're just gonna be talking primarily about just these images. They're gonna pull in as flat images and uh, we'll just kinda throw them wherever we need to use them. So we're gonna take a look right now at pulling in a sample 3D file and a sample 2D file. We'll start with the 3D. So each of these 3D files is gonna have a little bit different workflow. That is the information that you can pull in and the control you have over how you pull it in is gonna change depending on the file. So the information that's available to change on your import to DXF file is gonna be different from what's in an STL file because the data that's stored in that file type is a little bit different. So we're gonna take a look at a DXF file. So when you choose the type of file you want to import, you are gonna have, for the most part, there's a couple that don't have a configuration option, but most of them have this configure button. Clicking the configure button will allow you to choose how you want to import those files. So like I said, we'll go into the specifics in a separate file, maybe DXF and DWG files will have their own file. We can talk about what each of these mean, turn them on and off and see how they affect the import. For right now, I'm just gonna import it with the default configuration and I'm gonna go grab this DXF file. You can see one of the things that happens is when you choose a specific file format, anything that is not that file format is grayed out. So I can't pick on the PNG file right now, but I can choose this DXF file and I'm gonna click import. When I click import, it's gonna run me through a couple screens here, kind of just detailing the import process. It is possible to hit errors here where there's bad data where it can't import the file. If so, it will tell you that. Once imported, it will give you a summary. And again, the data that shows up here, the import results are gonna vary uh, file type by file type, but in general, it's gonna tell you whether it imported properly or not. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit close. And there we go, boom, it imports that DXF file. And when it imports a DXF file, it does put the entire thing in a group. Uh, going into that group will let you actually interact with the DXF as it existed when it was created to be imported. So this can sometimes mean there's an extra layer here where I wanna explode once to get rid of that container it created to put the DXF file into. And then this is the actual contents of the DXF inside here uh, is you know, an extra piece. So um, that's gonna vary based on how the file was created though, how many, how many layers deep the groups are, that sort of thing. 
But once it's pulled in, it will show up inside of a group that of course can be moved. So if I want to move something, I can just, you know, grab my move command, move it around, that sort of thing. Pretty simple at that point. All right, let's look at importing a 2D file. So I'm going to go to import again. I'm going to go to my types and we're going to scroll down because we're going to look at these ones at the bottom. So down here, I do have a filter here where I can say all supported image types. Show me everything that's an image type that support. That way, if you have a bunch of files and it's not just this one basic file like I have, uh, you'll see all of them at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and just say I want to bring in a PNG file. Now, something is different about importing 2D than 3D files right off the bat. That is this little drop down right here. When you choose an image type, it's going to come up and say, do you want to import as an image, as a texture, or as a matched photo? So texture and matched photo will actually get their own videos. Also, we'll talk about importing and using different images as textures. We'll also go into probably quite a bit of depth about match photo in the future. Right now, I just want to talk about importing as an image. This pretty much parallels what we were just looking at for 3D imports. So I'm going to turn on use as image and I'm going to import this 2D.png and say import. What happens with importing an image is when you come out here, it's going to be connected to your cursor. It's asking you to pick the first point. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab a spot on the red axis here. I'm just going to click once. And now what I can do is I can drag out and click as big as I want this to be. I can also specify an exact height down here. So if I want this to be, I don't know, exactly 10 feet tall, I can type in 10 foot and hit enter. And there we go. That is now imported exactly 10 feet tall. If I look at this now, similar to what happened when I pulled in the 3D, my 2D file import is also inside of a group. It's a special group though. This is not just a regular group like, well, frankly, like what the 3D file's in. If I go to entity info and I pick on the 3D file, it tells me it's got a component highlighted. So that's how to import it, import it into a component. If I pick my 2D import, it tells me that it's an image. It also tells me what PNG file is being displayed and what the exact size of it is. So this is, this is unique because this is not a regular group. What this is actually doing is it's created, so I can't like, I can't double click and then try to enter the group or anything. An image is a special kind of group that contains a face with this material placed on it. But as long as this image is in this special image group, this 2D texture that I, I just selected is not going to actually show up as a material if I go into like uh, my paint bucket tool or anything like that. As long as it's in here as an image, it's special, it's set apart. So this is something you might use if, if you're, say you wanted to import like a poster to put on a wall, or you wanted to import an image for the ground to, to reference, something like that, where you want this to not be a material you're gonna use as a texture anywhere in the model, and you want it to stay inside its own container, then image is what you wanna use. So very specific uh, examples, but that is the difference between importing 3D and importing 2D. Like I said, we'll dive a little bit deeper into those specific file formats in later videos. So that was intended to be fairly high level. Really, the difference between importing a 3D versus a 2D file, how that process goes, and what it's going to look like to import each. We'll go into some more depth later, but uh, right now, we just got to toe in the water before we dive in. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos each and every week. You can be notified of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing, what you think of these Square One videos, and what pieces you would like to see explored next. We like making these videos a lot. We'd like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.